Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Um, on behalf of uh, Inekinet and uh, my uh, co-host, uh, Laurent Smith, Secretary General of uh, NSOE, I would like to welcome you to uh, this uh, digital uh, roundtable. Uh, and I'm very pleased, actually, to see uh, so many uh, here today. Uh, and I'm also very pleased with the uh, distinguished list of uh, speakers that we have for the day. We, we meet at a time when the green transition is entering a new era. Uh, I believe that uh, the energy and digital sectors could be the power couple of this new era. A power couple that has the potential to catalyze the ongoing decarbonization of our uh, societies. But to release this potential, we need to see a coherent picture of how, of how the energy system is uh, transforming. We need to develop the energy markets to foster sound business models that meet the dual target of, on the one side, valuing the energy in accordance with the state of the energy system, and on the other side, uh, provide an attractive value proposition uh, to its customers. But how do we do that? In my view, there are three important prerequisites uh, for this development to take off. One, we should release our data to power new business models. Big data analysis can combine a more accurate understanding of customer preferences with the needs of the energy system going through a green transition. Second, we must master new partnerships to create synergies between new business models that are radically transforming value chains in and the opportunities of the energy system of tomorrow. And third, we must broaden our energy market perspective to increase consumer flexibility, cross-sector integration, and large-scale storage as a supplement to our current international energy markets. And I hope we will uh, cover many of these uh, aspects uh, today. That would be one step towards supporting the digital and energy sectors as the power couple of the future. And I will, in this opening speech, convey, convey my perspectives uh, on the three prerequisites, data, partnerships, and markets. So concerning the first message, the importance of data, um, renewable energy sources have in recent decades uh, dramatically driven a worldwide transformation of many power systems, making them more connected, more sustainable, and also to some extent uh, more uh, intelligent. And for several years, I've followed the discussion on the uh, digital uh, revolution and the impact it will have on societies and on energy. And the heart of this digital revolution and all the new technologies that we associate with it uh, is data, big data. And as system operators, data allows us to understand the energy system, but it also allows the energy market participant to understand the preferences of their customers much better uh, and to create new products and services to uh, the customers. And therefore, I think free and accessible data can create a lot of value in the energy sector. And I believe that system operators, be it TSOs or DSOs, need to support this. We should not necessarily design new customer-oriented business models ourselves, but leave this to the commercial market. But I think that we shall be in front facilitating that the owners of personal energy data, the consumers, easily and securely uh, can grant third-party access uh, to their energy data. And of course, other energy system data, such as market prices and uh, system needs, should also, I think, be accessible 
in order to easily estimate the value of the produced and consumed energy. As for the second message on new partnerships and emerging business models, well, digital platforms, advanced analytics, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and so on, bring many new tools to enable digital business models within the energy sector. And these business models already begin to emerge. And I think with all of you in the room, they are also well represented here uh, today. I see companies use digital tools to foster business models based on new digital platforms acting as network orchestrators. Others bring forward completely decentralized found business models. And new technologies also, of course, are being used to reduce transaction costs and optimize uh, existing core uh, businesses. And I think these solutions are being formed by companies that uh, think in terms of network creation and business models going across the classical value chain. This is a more sort of decentralized ecosystem type development compared to the traditional uh, value chain uh, in, in energy markets. And I think this might be sort of illustrated on, on this chart here. Um, harvesting the benefits of these uh, possibilities will require experimentation and learning that goes beyond the energy sector. We have to understand the topography of the new value chains and ecosystems to reap the synergies and the broader value propositions related to the energy system. This will require that we work closer together in partnerships with those in the energy sector that we already know, but also with entrants from other sectors with new ideas and new business models. And that is why Energinet and NSOE have taken the initiative to gather progressive people from the energy and digital sectors to foster partnerships for the future of energy. And I would like to emphasize that I see our role as the role of the catalyst. We should help pave the way for new business models that generate new value for society. We don't have all the answers, but would like to be part of the solution. This is not a task for TSOs or DSOs alone, nor for any other parts of the energy sector alone, but something we need to develop together. Getting to my third message on the need for broader vertical markets, uh, let me start with a Danish perspective. Uh, in, in Denmark, we have come a long way in decarbonizing our electricity system. Uh, and I think by 2020, some 50% of uh, electricity consumption in this country can be covered by production from wind alone. And already last year, we reached 45.8% of wind power in electricity consumption. During the, let's say, first part of the transition, we have very much focused on minimizing cost of energy. And I think reaching the next 50% where renewables will be cheap uh, and at times very plentiful, we have to ensure that energy is produced and consumed at its highest value for society. So we, mo we move from focusing on cost of energy to focusing more on value of energy. And our, on our journey so far, we have benefited from a very flexible production side with high power plant flexibility as consumption is inflexible. We have benefited from strong electricity grids nationally and also well connected internationally, making it possible to trade power across borders, 
And we have also benefited from subsidized renewables integrated through international uh, markets. But I think integrating the next 50% in a cost-effective way, we need to focus on the value of energy and apply a new vertical market perspective. We should provide for new tools and frameworks that supplement the markets we already know today by breaking down barriers, boundaries between energy sectors, by increasing market flexibility, especially from the demand side, and by enabling integration across entire systems, geographies, and time through large-scale storage. An example of this is electric vehicles and smart charging creating synergy between the energy sectors and transportation. Another, another example could be smart buildings providing flexibility to the energy system. You could say that in a way we have to flip the energy system on its head and enable the consumption side to harvest value by providing the flexibility needs caused by a fluctuating supply side. For this, we need a lot of data, digital solutions, new partnerships, and a broader mar market perspective. And indeed, I believe consumers and digitalization will be at the heart of our sustainable energy future. So let me end by saying that I look forward to the day and I hope for a lively debate. And I'll now give the floor to Siobhan Hall, our moderator of the day. Thank you very much.